Hello YouTube, in this hypertrophy series, we're going to be talking about the notions of nucleus overload versus junk volume. If you've taken the time to watch the three parter I've made about nucleus overload, you're already quite familiar with the concept. And you might have started to question yourself when it came to the applications of them, when it came to hypertrophy, because I gave you parameters of application within your program, but I don't really discuss the effectiveness of it based on programming notions. And if you actually try and intellectualize the concept, you might end up realizing that in terms of programmation, it looks quite similar to what some would call junk volume. And as far as junk volume goes, I also define it within the hypertrophy series. I never directly name it simply because I don't like the term. I think it's a misrepresentation of the, the actual concept of a volume that is ineffective. It's not junk. It's just ineffective. I think words are important. And it's poor semantics. But if you followed the videos I made about volume without intensity, you will understand why that application of volume is lacking. It's, uh, it's too time expensive. It doesn't give much results because of the low intensity. It has limitations because it doesn't trigger muscular failure, etc., etc. So thinking about these facts, you can easily relate them to nucleus overload and think, okay, well, if ineffective volume falling within those parameters and outside of the intensity windows are not supposed to be represented in the program, why exactly is nucleus overload good? Because they share a lot of uh, things in common. And I would even correct you if you said that, and I would tell you they don't share some things in common, they share everything in common, because it's the exact same thing. Nucleus overload is ineffective volume by all senses and by all definitions of the term. So why do I promote it, and why do I not promote junk volume? There's one reason, and that one reason explains everything. Junk volume, when it exists within a program and the program of an, of an individual, has a tendency to replace volume, meaning that it takes the spot of something that should have been a high intensity set. And that is dramatic. That is when you lose all of the gains that you're you supposed to make because you are training outside of a relevant intensity window for the entirety of the tonnage of the session. Now, if someone came to me and told me that they do three sets within a relevant intensity window, then they slapped on a set of just burn, something that is completely irrelevant for 22, 22 reps. I would have an issue with that. I would tell them that this might not be the best way to progress, but I wouldn't take it out of the program because there is something before that that represents meaningful intensity that led to muscular failure. And that is the point with nucleus overload. You see, you cannot just do nucleus overload. It, it, there's no point. The very existence of nucleus overload hinges on the fact that on the side, you're doing strength work. It complements the strength work. It, could, it completes it. But without it, it loses all of its meaning. And that's an important notion. Why? It's an important notion in by and itself because it's going to tell you, it's going to let you realize that you will still be able to make gains off of that type of practice. But it's also good because you need to think about concepts within the parameters of the program and its application. If you change the context of a program, the same principle is going to be bad or good. What surrounds it is what makes it effective or bad. And that goes for every single aspect of hypertrophy. They are never fully good. They can only be good if they exist within something in the program that makes them so. And that's also relevant because it's in direct connection with you, with who you are. A principle within your program can be good, and in the same program for someone else, it will be bad because it's not going to be aligned with their goals. And the goals that you have are the very reasons why you're actually trying to uh, pursue hypertrophy. You're the one who's doing that. The hypertrophy is not pursuing you. And so to go back to that notion of comparing the two concepts, you also need to keep in mind that there are other costs associated with what most people would call junk volume. Even though 
it is still taking place in irrelevant density windows, the numbers matter. Meaning what? Meaning that if this is relevant in terms of intensity and all of this is not, this is the plus side. So it's anything above 95%, anything that's one rep maxes. So you have a hundred and you might think to yourself, well, this, it stops here, right? You cannot go past a hundred because anything above a hundred, you fail as a lift. And I would say to you that you're wrong. You're not thinking about that in the proper way. You can do a lift that's 120% intensity. If you manipulate the strength curve, if you do a variation, you can, meaning that let's say you're going to do a super high block pull. Technically, the intensity of the block pull is going to be bring back because it's its own lift. But if you apply it on a spectrum that represents how much you can deadlift, it represents a pull from the floor, a hip hinge that is way above 100%. So this is how you can exist past the 100%. Some would call overloading a lift. Why do you overload? The intensity of the lift. How do you do that? You manipulate range of motion. So that's the plus side. And usually the minus side tends to be the one that is the clearest for people because anything below 60% intensity tends to fall into the ineffective volume range. But within that range, if something is at 55% and something is at 15%, you realize also that this is a massive gap. It's a gap that is bigger than the intensity window that your lifts take place in. And it's still relevant, even though it's an effective volume, the notion of it and the knowledge we can gain from that is relevant. Why? Because nucleus overload is going to take place here. And uh, what most people call junk volume is going to take place here. Most people who do junk volume, they take a weight that is repable for maybe 30 reps and they're going to get stopped by a pump, by mechanical, mechanical failure, around 20 reps, okay? If you do nucleus overload and you apply it properly with the lifts I told you to apply it, that failure isn't gonna come. Meaning that even though you're doing it at 15%, you're going to be able to do more reps and even though that range of reps is much bigger, which should mean that the mechanical failure should cut much more of a portion of the reps, it doesn't. Why? Because you do it within certain movements that do not promote mechanical failure. So you still manage to reach muscular failure on something that is 15% intensity, and that's insane. And just that justifies nucleus overload at its own principle that it exists separated from the idea of a junk volume. Important notion for you, because it's going to allow you to target certain body parts, especially the small muscle groups, with zero risk of injury, a perfect recovery control, and get great gains from it. I got massive gains in my lats and triceps from nucleus overload. But on the flip side, if you were to try to do the same thing with junk volume, you would not only find that you don't really get much from it, because as I explained with the rep uh, discrepancy and the failure, you're not going to be able to accumulate enough tonnage, even though it's easy tonnage with, uh, with junk volume practices. And the injury risk is actually still high because you can develop tendonitis from that through overuse injuries. So I'm going to leave you with that. I just want to expand your understanding of the parameters of hypertrophy because some things that you might think are completely useless, for example, the window of intensity that is not relevant, can still hold a lot of value to understand concepts that are beneficial for us. So I'm going to leave you with that. Many more topics I want to explore in this series, and I hope you will keep tuning in. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.